Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. Welcome into my studio. And on this video, I want to show you some testing I've recently done uh, on trying to find the best black pastel pencil. Now, by best, I really mean the darkest because I've um, tried some against others and really some are very, very light in comparison. And I want to get a real rich dark so that when I'm doing areas like around eyes and um, real very contrasty black subjects, I want the darkest dark I can get. And I've uh, found with pastels there's a big difference in variations as well. And I asked lots of people, as I mentioned later on in the video, which was their favorite black. Some people had been drawing with pastels for years and years. They were professionals and they told me to buy specific ones that they assured me were definitely the blackest black that you could possibly buy. And when I got them, I was so disappointed because there was no blacker than my standard pencil. In fact, some of them were even much lighter and less black. So on this video, I'm really looking at it um, just scientifically. I'm not bound by any companies because, you know, with some people, they are bound by companies. Perhaps years and years ago, they started with uh, a set and they've teamed up with a company and they may even have their own color range and they can't really say much against those anymore. Now, I'm not bound by anything like that, so I'll show you and you will see exactly what it is scientifically side by side so you can decide what you like yourself. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so as you can see, I got together lots of different types of uh, pencils mainly pastel pencils, but I also chucked in some uh, a carbon one and a couple of charcoals as well because they're all very similar um, and they could be intermixed. They're all matte um, effects on them, whereas if you use a graphite you get like a, a shiny reflective effect. So what I've set out here, I've got my Carbothello which is my standard black, my standard pencils. I love that range. And I've put that at the top on both columns. And what I've done then, I've created a whole column of Jess Carbothello. And that's there simply for the purpose we can judge across at all the others more easily if we've got a base to work from. So the Carbothello is the whole of that column. And that one there, that's our base. So the next column then there, and also in this these columns are the pencils, um, so that's the Carbothello. Here I've got Karen Dash, uh, Pit Pastel. So you can see and judge them not only in a row, but also against our our uh, base color there, the Carbothello. So I've done that because sometimes when you've got a, a light looking one, then the next one to it can look dark. But in reality, it might not be darker. The light one is pushing it off. So if I put like a bright white there, then these opposite ones would look dark. So if we just quickly go through it, because there's no need to make too much of a um, program out of it. But the reason I've done it is because doing pastels, I want a real rich dark sometimes, perhaps around eyes in particular, we want a very dark. And by being able to get a very dark in there it increases my tonal range so my my difference or my steps from very white to very black will be greater and that makes for a punchier drawing if that's what i want um, so it makes a big effect and on my gorilla drawing you can see around the eyes on that is really punchy on my new wolf one as well it's very punchy around the eyes and that you know makes a big difference for me so I really wanted to see what's black and what's not so I asked a lot of people online what was the blackest black some of these were professional artists and some were amateur artists and they all had their own opinion and they all guaranteed to me no this is definitely the blackest black well I'd buy it match it against my Carbothello find it's exactly the same buy a different one someone else had recommended match it against my Carbothello it's probably even lighter so going what other people say is not scientific, so I bought loads. I purchased all these myself. So let me go through it and I can show you exactly which ones really are darker and which ones really are not darker and the pros and cons of them as well. So Starbothello at the top, Carbothello, sorry. Um, that's my base. Next one down, Karen Dash pencil. Lots of people reckon that this was without a doubt the darkest dark 
and you can see there's virtually no difference considering as well that it's about three times the price. I know it may be perhaps it's more light fast or whatever but there you are. Next up then is I think it's Brunzeal Pastel. I've heard of it but I hadn't got any so I bought that. That's a different colour. It's more of a bluey uh, grey. I'd call these greys rather than blacks to be honest. Pit Pastel. So that's a popular one with lots of people. That's even lighter. I don't know if you can see it but it is slightly lighter even than the Carbothello in there. Creta Colour Pastel or Creta Colour Pastel. That's even, that's nowhere near a black. That's just like a, I'd say that was like a, a dark grey if that. So that's miles lighter. So if you've only got that set of pencils and that's as dark as you can go, that's going to make a difference to how your drawings look dramatically. Conde of Paris, lots of people reckon that these were the darkest. Pretty much exactly the same as the Carbothello again. Rembrandt Black Pastel Pencil. Now that one was darker and that was interesting, it was a nice pencil and um, it sharpened well as well. If I grab that one out so you can see what it is, that's a Ram Rembrandt Black Pastel Lyra on there. I haven't looked at the light fastness and everything on these, I'm only looking at the how dark they are to be honest. But that one was definitely darker than the uh, Carbothello, definitely darker and it sharpened in my sharpener well. Conti of Paris, so it's a different version of the Conti, Pierre Noir 3B. Lots of people said without a doubt this was definitely the darkest black pencil and as you can see almost identical to the Carbothello. Virtually no difference whatsoever. Here I've got a charcoal pencil, Rembrandt, charcoal soft, so that should be their darkest one, grey. And charcoals are usually, they come out kind of a grey to be honest, but I wanted to try them. And then at the bottom I got General's Charcoal 6B, so that should pretty much be their darkest as well, if not their darkest, and that's a dark grey too. So if we look over here, so I've repeated that Carbothello column, so we can judge again. Got a Derwent Charcoal Dark, that's a bit darker than the Carbothello, slightly, slightly. Now, Pit soft charcoal. I'd heard that this is dark. I bought it and it is very dark but there's a problem with it. The charcoal in there is so soft it just crumbles away from me. Now if I grab that pencil and show you that's what you're looking for. There's a soft wrote on there. Okay so it's black. It's really really black. Excellent. As soon as I got it and tried it I thought that's it. Got it. But it, like I said, it kept breaking. Now if you want to sharpen it with a knife and you've got a couple of minutes to sharpen each one each time, you may get away with it and then um, sharpen it to a finer point then with sandpaper. But the problem is with it, so it breaks in the pencil sharpener really frequently. But even bigger than the problem that it's so soft that as soon as you start to draw with it, you lose the sharpness on the point. So that's the offset. It's really black but it's really soft and I think that kind of goes together with it. General's Carbon 595, as you can see that's more of a silvery grey, dark grey. Creticolor Black Chalk, now again black, nice and black, nice and dark, not as dark as the pit but it's really dark. And that's this one, okay now the problem with that just to do the testing I ended up sharpening it and that's all I've got left because once again breaks and snaps frequently I think probably I even bought a um, Conti of Paris sharpener which is recommended to try it but I can barely barely sharpen it to be honest it was breaking absolutely all the time yet again because it's so crumbly and soft Here's a graphite pencil just for interest because it's one of the darkest graphites out there. The Stedler 8B Mars Lumograph and it reflects less. So it's less shiny than most other graphites. So I thought I'd give that a go because when I was looking at it in the shop it looked super black on white paper. On this grey pastel mat you can see it's grey. Okay now this is 
below this pink line are pastel sticks. Now this is the reason, this particular one, that I even started this experiment because I had an old set of Prismacolor new pastels. So when I started doing pastels again, now these are years old, when I started doing pastels again I draw, drag those out because years ago I gave up on pastels a lot you know because I was using the wrong paper and things and I tried out this new pastel black and it was absolutely pitch black really really black now I hope that shows up but it's a massive difference and I was using this on a couple of my pieces when I was first starting out and they made a massive difference it got me that extra step or two or three darker than anything else so that's why I wanted to try all these by them so that's a new pastel black stick now the thing is it's quite hard as well so you can sharpen it to a, a nice point um, fairly easily okay it can go much sharper than that I haven't tried doing a small sharpener to see if I can make it at the end like a pencil but it is firm it's really firm and it's really black you can see how black it is just looking at it okay so that's what I liked problem is can't get it in the UK I've only been able to source it in sets and then I've got to pay a ridiculous amount because it's an American product I've got to pay something like 60 pound for a set of 20 or whatever and it's not gonna last long so that's an issue and that's why I'm looking at these next down then is the Faber Castell studio stick so we see it's nowhere near as dark Rembrandt stick it's nice and dark compared to the um, Carbothello, but it's nowhere near as dark again. And then Pan Pastel at the bottom. It's not that opaque really, so it's never going to match up to the new pastel, which I want for detail. That's what I want it for. I want it to be able to uh, be nice and sharp. I want to create fine detail with it around eyes and things. That's really why I wanted it in pencil format. So I haven't really tried out many um, sticks against it in black because most of my sticks are colored for the vibrant colors but this shows you now then that you know almost as black is a pit soft charcoal which breaks all the time the creta color is almost as black breaks again the Rembrandt black pastel is probably the only one I found so far that I can kind of um, sharpen in one of my sharpeners which is the preferred way I'd rather sharpen. I don't want to be spending lots of time sharpening these things with um, razor blades. So I'm not sure if that has shown up properly on screen, okay, but that's probably saved you quite a bit of money because you're going to buy all these pencils. Another way of looking at it is by using a black piece of paper. Now this looks very black until you start putting things by it. And if I show you now just a couple, so I can show you what I mean may show up better on this so this is the new pastel okay so I'm on black paper new pastel now you can see how black that is if I put on instead um, Karen Dash because that's pretty much lots of people's favorites especially professionals I don't know whether it's just a thing that they like to say they're using the most expensive pencils or whatever it is perhaps they they love it I don't know okay in comparison that's that if we look at perhaps the uh, credit color fine art pastel doesn't even really show up because it's that kind of gray if I look at perhaps the Rembrandt black pastel pencil shows up nice and black but see the difference so it isn't quite as black but it's a nice black um, let's have a look at the pit charcoal soft so this was nice and black as well but this is super soft one you can see how soft it is how quickly it's wearing down as soon as I touch it on there and then things like charcoal pencils just for you to have a quick look it's another charcoal you see how they are kind of um, Rembrandt charcoal Lyra they are the charcoal is a dark grey okay so that shows it up as well so 
I hope that this is um, if I if I actually put a white on here as well so this is the new pastel white you can see how things change when you put a white by them and how they can all start to look much darker in there so you can see how it offsets so I hope that video helps you out some somewhat and you can see there that probably what I'm going to start using now is the Rembrandt Black Pastel. I'm going to buy a couple more of those. I'm going to get hold of, or in fact, a, a friend of mine out in uh, the States is getting me some of these new Pastel Black Sticks. So he's getting me about 24 of them. So that's really kind of him to do that for me and ship them over. So I've got that to fall back on. I can't see me really using the pit soft charcoal because it's breaking. I can't see me using the credit color because it breaks all the time. Um, I'll let's continue with my Carbothello, you know, because any of these then are good, other than perhaps that that charcoal and this credit color. They're so light, I probably won't bother filling the two for the paper up with that. But I'll still use my Carbothellos and any of those other ones as my darks. It's only I'm looking at this only for when I do the darkest, absolute darkest dark on my pieces. Nothing more than that. So I'll reserve them for those. So I hope that's been of use for you. Helps you decide what you want as a black in your pastel, or even your charcoal sets. And uh, I'll see you all again real soon. If you're looking for more art resources, I've really got you covered. I've got a dedicated tutorial website. That's jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of videos on there ebook tutorials you name it it's on that site I've got a patreon art channel so every month I put up brand new videos and that could be pastel videos oils charcoals the full-length videos and there's also photo references with the easy trace line art on there I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me and that's on patreon and also if you have to even more reference photos I got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos I think there's about 900 on there at the moment so that's wildlifeart-online.com now please with my youtube channel new videos coming on here as well if you can possibly subscribe to the channel then you're never going to miss out on new videos